What should we say? It's been a bit of an up and down start to life in Serie A, but we're in the Champions League and that is going to be the focus of today's episode. We'll find out who we've got in our group stage and uh, play our first game. So following on from our opening day defeat to the hands of Atalanta, we went away from home against Cremonese and won 5-1. Almada, Liberato, Alcarez, Lazaro, Almada. It was a convincing performance. We then had a very, very tight game against Sassuolo at home, which we did end up winning 1-0. If you remember from last season, Sassuolo actually finished third, I think, so qualified for the Champions League. So it was a good result. <laughs> this one wasn't. <laughs> a 4-1 away defeat against Cagliari. It was a pretty even game with them slightly edging the match stats, but as you can see by the score sheet, they smashed us. We then took out our frustration on Empoli, beating them 5-1 at home. Alcaraz with a goal, Moise Keane and Hlozek on the score sheet. And Lazaro came on later on and got himself a brace. We then went away from home against Parma and won 2-0. Moise Keane and Almada getting two very, very late goals in what looked like it was going to be a drab 0-0 draw. We then had a home tie against arch-rival Sampdoria and beat them 2-0 in a very, very comfortable game. Moise Keane and Adam Hlozek on the score sheets in this one and that sees... The Serie A table looking like this. We're currently sitting fourth. Them two defeats are really annoying. I'm, I'm really not happy about them. But Atlanta have started the season well. So it's a little bit more understandable. But that Cagliari defeat was just inexcusable. A really, really poor, poor result. But that takes us to the Champions League group stage. As you can see, we have got an absolutely horrible group. Manchester City, we're not expected to beat them at all. Porto and Marseille. Uh, the other two sides com completing the group alongside ourselves. Now I'm thinking maybe Porto or Marcia are more our level. Like very, very similar in terms of the player quality that they have at their disposal. We need to be better than them, ultimately. And I'm not sure if we are. <laughs> I mean, we've been fortunate in one sense. We haven't got a Man City in a Borussia Dortmund or a Man City in a Spurs or a Bayern. You know, we've sort of avoided that second massive club. But Porto or Marcia that we could have got Applewell. You know, I would have much preferred having them in my group. And it will be Porto at home, will be today's episode, whilst we're going to play Lazio away back in league action. Talking about the squad and talking about league action, Adam Hlozek has recently returned from his injury. He did have some very, very late interest during the transfer window from Juventus. And as you can see, he's got a lot of interest from a lot of the big clubs in, uh, in and around Europe. And the problem with that is, I'm not sure how to tell you this, but he has a £45 million release fee and he wants at least hundred grand a week to steer and sign a new deal without a minimum fee release clause. So uh, we might be saying goodbye to Adam Hlozek at some point during this season. So at least for the time being, we will enjoy his services. Looking at his attributes, I don't even think he should be that good. Physically, he's phenomenal, but mentally and technically, he's nothing really that special. So I think I could replace him if we did end up selling. But obviously, I'd prefer to keep him at the club. But currently on 15k a week, he wants an 80k per week wage rise. I'm not sure I'm going to be able to actually afford it. Our wage budget, as it stands, is only at £667,000 per week. So if I was to give him 100k per week, you're talking a sixth of our wage budget gone on just Adam Hlozek. Okay, quickly complete the transfer window as well. We did end up signing them three loan players that we spoke about in the last episode. Makudi, Pellegri and Patrick Berg came in. None of them will be regular starters. Patrick Berg, the most likely to get game time. Um, as you can see, he's already came three times off the bench to play league action. But they were just squad fillers, just to make sure we've got enough to see us through the rest of the season. With the European champions, we're going to need a lot of bodies in and around it. But let's get to today's game. FC Porto. I don't think we have any major injury issues to speak of. Uh, Liberato has been suspended uh, for the last game, I think. Or was he injured? He was out anyway. And one more thing I didn't speak about as well. Nicolo Armini. We signed him in the first season. He has returned and we've decided to keep him at the club. And as you can see, I'm trying to give him as much game time as possible. He could potentially be David Carmo's replacement if we do ever sell. But 21 years old. We need to see some rapid development from him. Physically, he's pretty much there, you know. Um, technically, he needs some work. Mentally, he does as well. But he's in the squad. He's on the bench. Our uh, bench is so much better than we've ever had it, by the way. Sport Yellow and Golden. Giglione, uh, Enel, David Carmo and Liberato in the defence. Tag Seth, Melodjoni, Alcaraz in the midfield. Hlozek, Thiago Almada. Mo Do I start Moise Keane? I'm going to start, I'm going to start Lazaro. We need to get him into the squad. Get him improving and... He's the long-term future. Moise Keane probably isn't. Now, I was interested in two Porto players during the summer. 
Notley, Diogo Costa and Thomas Estevez, their goalkeeper and their right back. But as it is with Porto, they often want ridiculous fees. So uh, we weren't able to make a deal happen for either of those players. But we'll keep an eye on seeing how they perform today. Um, and we might be interested further down the line. First highlight of the game comes one minute in. It's FC Porto's throwing. It's cleared by us to Adam Hlozek. Let's see if the boys can build something with this. Giglione coming down the right-hand side. Feeds it into Hlozek. He's only got two goals in the four games he started. So he's got some catching up to do if he's to keep his form from last season. Melodroni coming down this right-hand side. He's got Giglione in support. Can he whip it in? No, he plays it back to Melodroni. Onto the edge for Liberato. That was... A very dodgy pass. Looked like he was aiming it to the referee, to be quite honest with you. He whips it in. Adam Hlozek's there. He would have buried that last season. Five minutes gone. We have ourselves another highlight. Throw in by us is cleared by Porto. And uh, they break. The ball is switched to the left-hand side. We do get the interception, but we don't win the second ball. We win the sixth ball, though. And Lazaro, oh, a lovely little uh, knock past Mbemba. He's in behind. What a challenge by the defender. Lazaro is there though to bank it away. His fourth goal of the season. Hasn't started too many games, but when he's been coming on, he has been impressing me with his performances. Corner for us. Tag Seth will be the man to take it. I'm trying a new corner tactic, by the way, for this season. It is the short corner. Thiago Almada often coming uh, short to get it short and then seeing where we'll go from there. We didn't have the best success last year uh, with the front post crossing. We haven't really got that set piece specialist to really make it work so i'm trying the short corner tactic we'll see if it uh, helps out in the attack and as anel pumps the ball forward hlozek's in behind he's back lads adam hlozek's third goal of the season long ball over the top he uses his pace and his composure to bury a past diogo costa and 2-0 30 minutes in marseille are actually beating man city away from home in the uh, other tie in our group that would be a turn up for the books if that was to happen but we have ourselves another highlight 39 minutes in porto on the attack Oh, we cut it out though. Giglione tries to. Oh, he does find Lazaro. Absolutely fantastic pass. He's got the he's got the run on Mbemba here. He's taken down in the box. Referee, how was that not a penalty? Liberato though picks up the ball on this left hand side. Tag Seth. Uh, don't lose it to Fabio Vieira. That's not good. Porto switched the play to Luis Diaz on this left hand side. His pass is absolutely dreadful. And Lazaro, oh, beautiful play. Thiago Almada is in behind now. Can he bury it? He certainly can. We're making Porto look like mugs here. Genoa 3, Porto 0, 40 minutes in. Almada's fifth. I think Almada's our top scorer for this season so far. Uh, not not what he's known for, but I will take it. Hey, lads. Fantastic performance so far. Probably our best performance this season, to be quite honest with you. I know we've had a couple of 5-1s and stuff, but that was against teams near the bottom of Serie A. This is the first convincing performance against a good side. Porto with the first highlight of the second half, 50 minutes in, playing it about in the midfield. And the ball is played over the top. Luis Diaz is in behind. Big save spot, yellow. He steps up. Well, at 3-0 up, I'm actually going to see and make some subs. With not necessarily those who were struggling out there. I'm just going to see who I want. I want Armani to come on. We'll take off Anel, who's on a yellow card, and protect him from getting sent off. And then at that point, there's nobody else. Melodroni can come off. Thomas Belmont can come on and then go into the defensive midfield. And Tag Seth can move into the centre. Only 15 minutes left in this match. We have ourselves another highlight. Porto clear. And uh, well, <laughs> Armini's taking his time. We'll see when it's actually mattering. Alcaraz finds Hlozek with a nice pass forward. He tries to find Lazaro. It's a dodgy pass. Diogo Costa does claim. Alcaraz plays a forward. Hlozek's in the box. He finds Almada. Is he offside? I'm assuming he's offside. He's not offside. Almado's second goal of the game. He's sixth of the season. And uh, I was I was worried about this group. I really, really was. And But if this this displays anything to go up high, Porto don't look like they're going to be challenging us for that second place at all. As we do have another highlight corner for Porto's played in. Clear off the line. Oh, I mean, he gets it clear. And is it going to be a break? An opportunity for us. Thiago Almada can bring it forward down this left-hand side. He's got Lazaro. Nice little pass through. He's in behind Lazaro. Saved by Costa. I mean, Lazaro always needs two two bites at the cherry. But that's all he needs. He doesn't need his third. And with that goal, we will make our final substitute of the game. Uh, uh, who's it going to be? It looks like Adam Hlozek's picked up a knock. So we're going to get Moyes Keane on for him. And uh, we'll see out the rest of this game. Three minutes to go. Luis Diaz brings it forward for Porto. Gets past his man as well. He's got the options on the left-hand side. Should he want them? Fabio Vieira is his chosen destination. As I do. Plays it back to Luis Diaz, Armani. Well done, son. Long ball over the top. Hlozek feeds it through for Lazaro. Can he get his hat-trick? He can. Lazaro with his hat-trick. He's sixth this season. 
and um, he's starting the next game too, right? He is. This will surely be the final highlight of the game. 91 minutes gone. Tagseth brings it down in the midfield. Moise Keane has got Giglione uh, overlapping on that right-hand side. He picks it up again. Can he get past his man? He cannot. Oh, ball's played through. Vitinha's in behind. Our clean sheet. David Carmo saves it. Well done. And there we have it then, boys. Genoa 6, Porto 0. It wasn't a 6-0 game. <laughs> Looking at the match stats, but we were super, super clinical. All of our strikers getting on the score sheet. And... Uh, Absolutely loved every second of it. Porto aren't going to be the problem. Marseille ended up getting a point out of that Man City game away from home. They could very well be the problem. Lozek's picked up a three today. Injury, he might end up missing the next game against Lazio. Now, if you set your minds back to last season, Lazio were our absolute nemesis. So I'm hoping Lozek is fit. We need to get revenge. And I'll see you at the Lazio game. So we go ahead against the game against uh, Lazio with an unchanged side. We are going to a more counter-attacking team mentality. Um, I've noticed, particularly last season, most of our defeats came away from home. So uh, we're going to try and make changes when we do end up away from home, particularly against sides like this who can definitely cause us problems. But let's get a kick off and see how we get on against uh, sixth place Lazio. We have our first highlight of the game. It's Lazio with a free kick. Oh, Wacken Korea puts it uh, in the back of the net. And we are 1-0 down already. We're straight away coming off cautious. We're going back to balanced. Uh, see if our boys can get us back into this as soon as possible. It's another corner. It was a free kick last time, not a corner. But they've almost scored from a set piece again. I'm not liking how this is going, boys. To be quite honest with you, Korea gets in behind. Sport yellow with a decent save. Ten minutes gone. We have ourselves another highlight. And I don't like where the ball is right now. NL. Oh, he does find Moise Keane. Almada. Oh, didn't take Moise Keane out for Lazaro. Almada gets to the byline. We'll have to bring on Lazaro at some point. Is that not a pen ref? Ah, oh, Correa brings it down beautifully. Down. <laughs> Who was that? Was that Liberato? Just tries to take him down. Sporty yellow with a decent save. Right, well, things aren't going well. I think it's I think it's uh, reasonable to say that whatever we're doing right now isn't quite working. So let's change things up in terms of our passing. Uh, we're keeping possession fine, which is not the issue. It's just uh, Lazio are far more competent on the ball than we are right now. Another ball over the top. Pasalek is in behind. Again, if that was Immobile, you're probably still looking at 2-0 Lazio. Looking at the average rate and Sport Yellow is keeping us in this. 29 minutes gone. We have another highlight and it's Lazio once again in possession. Unless they give it away. Melagioni. Oh, he's, Moise Keane is through. We do not deserve that. <laughs> we do not deserve that at all. Moise Keane's fifth goal of the season. Levels things up, 1-0. Cataldi with a uh, corner again. Lazio are very, very dangerous on set pieces. Oh, this is exactly the same as the goal. Cataldi, oh my God. Lazio should be about 4-1 up. And there we have it for half-time. Lazio 1, Genoa 1. Completely undeserved. But uh, we'll kick off for the second half. I think the changes have had a positive impact. We've lost a little bit of possession. But we're definitely causing them a few more problems going forward. It's us in defence against their front two that we're not really dealing with. As Liberato plays the ball in, Adam Plozek's at the back post. I thought he was offside. We'll see what VAR says. I've never seen one of these being given after it's gone to this screen. Yeah, goal disallowed. Disappointing. Another highlight now. Giglione has picked up a knock. Hopefully we've got Sardella on the bench to uh, take him off. Plozek whips the ball in, claimed by Strakosha. We'll make that change now. We'll get uh, Sardella on for Giglione once this highlight ends. Giglione on the ball. Can you make a positive impact, mate, before you go off? We will wait and see. Tag sets, which is the player of Liberato. Probably our best player in the squad at this point, Liberato. Moise Keane's in behind. <laughs> Imagine if we steal three points from this game. I absolutely love it. Lazio 1, Genoa 2. Only half an hour to go. Ramirez. Pass a Ah, well, I will. Oh, he's offside. He is offside, referee. Get that goal chalked off. And uh, let's carry on with the game. We're going to try with the cautious team mentality again. Now that we're 2-1 up, half an hour to go. We're playing a little bit more direct as well. So it might suit the more counter-attacking uh, tactic that we've got deployed now. Liberato picks up the ball on the left-hand side. He's got a lot of work to do to get this to atta an attacking position. He finds Melagioni in the centre. He's got Sardella supporting him on this right-hand side. He whips it in. Hlozek's there. I think I might have to take off Hlozek. He's on a 6.3. Um, Arnie recently recovered from injury. We'll get Lazaro back into the starting eleven, and um, see how it goes from there. He's our short corner. Almada whips it in. Oh, oh, it goes in. The short corners are OP. 
<laughs> Lazari with the own goal. This, like, I, I can't remember a time where we've least deserved a, a victory if we do end up getting it. The goal's been disallowed. Never mind. With 15 minutes to go, we will look to make some changes. Alcaraz, he can come off for Patrick Berg in the centre of midfield and Thomas Belmont can come on. Oh, I can't make any more subs. Never mind. Another short corner from us. And they've got the man marking now. So they've figured it out. But Almada still manages to get the cross in. Correa clears. And Immobile. I mean, we've got six men back. If they score from this position, I will be hugely disappointed. He skips past one man. He brings it back to Lazio so they can get a little bit more reinforcements into the final third. Ramirez gets challenged by Melagioni though. And as long as we're not silly with the boys. Uh, could be a counter-attacking opportunity here. Moyes King, can he get his hat-trick for the deer? Oh, he can. Strakosha does get his hand to it, but it's not quite enough. Lazio 1, Genoa 3. Moyes King, 7th goal of the season. An utter smash and grab. Five minutes to go. The second half, we've been a different side. Absolutely dominated Lazio in the second half. They've still had their opportunities, but um, far better than the first half. Tag set. Plays it out to Liberato on this left-hand side. A nice little dink through ball to Moyes Kane. He's got options in the centre. He holds it up nicely. Uh, Liberato, can we whip it in? I mean, Milinkovic Savic, that is disgusting. Get him sent off, referee. Give us a penalty and everyone will be happy. I'll see you in 10 minutes. All of that, it wasn't a penalty. He hasn't been sent off. We've just wasted our time. We'll see though. Tag Seth is on the free kick. Can we get at least a goal out of it? No, we can't. It might end up being a Lazio opportunity. Sardella gets there first. Thank God for that. Well, we've been on the receiving end of some undeserved defeats. Not often do we get an undeserved victory, but this one was definitely it. Lazio won, Genoa 3. Two wins out of two. Uh, a win against who I'm assuming is going to be one of our Champions League rivals for qualification come the end of the season. That could be absolutely massive. And there is the Serie A table. Moise Keane, top goal scorer right now. We are sitting in third place, two points behind Atlanta, one point behind Juve. Uh, we're, we're still, it's too congested to start to call who might be the breakaway pack in terms of Champions League qualification. But we started decently. The two defeats do sting, but uh, it hasn't been too bad. The games are going to come thick and fast at your face. Olympic Marseille and Inter Milan will be the next episode, both away from home. And then after that, we'll complete our Champions League group stage against Man City and Udinese. But anyway, lads. If you have enjoyed today's video, consider leaving a like. And if you are enjoying my content, get yourself subscribed. But until next time, take it easy.